Let's take a look at this code learning remote. This is a little remote control that can learn non-code hopping uh, remote transmitters codes. And they have to be in the same frequency. In this case, it's 433 megahertz. So at the moment, this button controls this light, but this button does not. We want to teach this button to actually control that light. So what we do is we press it four times and hold it in the fourth press. So here's the button, one, two, three, four. And we keep holding and watch the little light. After a while, it will start flashing and then keep the button held until it goes static. Now it's gone static, release the button, put it next to the one you want to clone. And if you watch the LEDs, and I'll zoom down this so you can see it. If you watch the LED, particularly on here, then you'll see it flashes as a pattern and then it goes static. Ready? Here we go. Both at once. Now it's static. It has control over the light as well as this one. Okie dokie, let's open it up. So, this screwdriver might fit it. No, that screwdriver won't fit it. Hold on a moment. Let's see if one of these bits fits it. Try this one. That feels good. Other things worth mentioning about this. The website, I'm sure bought one of these before and struggled with it. This one was supposed to be cloning and I couldn't work out how to make it clone. It turns out the actual listing on AliExpress does have a video showing how to do it in Chinese. I didn't realize there was a video on it. I worked it out myself just by pressing combinations. So first thing I'm seeing on this side, we've got a button and what looks like an antenna going around the outside, quite a long antenna. On the other side, we have a 2032. We have the chip. Oh, we've got another little chip down there. I wonder what that is. And a couple of transistors. This is quite complicated. Oh, and another antenna going around the outside of the circuit board. Okay, I shall take a picture of this and we can explore it further. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. There's some oddities. This was made just a little bit harder by the fact it is RF circuitry, which doesn't obey all the usual rules. So the antennas, the receiving antenna, see this squiggly antenna here? This is the receiving antenna, which is used to detect the signal from the remote you're pairing it with. The outer antenna here is echoed on both sides. It starts here next to the little RF bit of RF circuitry and it snakes around the outside and ends with these two solder pads and it's linked to the other side of the track with an identical matching antenna but just with plated through holes all the way around. I guess it's just to thicken up the antenna conductor just to make it lower impedance. Not really sure. But I'm guessing that this might be for fine-tuning the end of it or adding a little extension antenna on, I'm not really sure. That is for the RF wizards to understand. The other thing on the back of this track is a small ground plane, a push button which clicks onto that ground plane and has this little track coming over here, which surfaces over here. And it's also got the LED poking through a very crude hole, which has been made by drilling multiples of small holes. Not sure if they then routed it out beyond that, but it's definitely got the sort of pattern of small holes there. And it's that LED over here that is actually pointing through that. Right, we've seen this side of the circuit board. Let's zoom up on the front. And then I'll show you the schematic and the oddity. Let's zoom up in this. Right, so here's the lithium cell. Here is the microcontroller. It's an FT60E021. I looked that up online, I found its data sheet, I looked at its instruction set and realised very quickly that it was basically a PIC microcontroller clone uh, with almost a completely identical instruction set but with slightly different wording. Very odd. This unmarked chip, I've worked out what that is, this is the RF transmitter chip connected to that big fat antenna around the outside. This RF25 is a um, R25, should I say, is the RF transistor with the little RF diode for that 
loopy coil on the other side. And these are just perplexing, these two resistors. We've got some bias resistor in the capacitor for the RF receiver. But these two are perplexing because they are just effectively turning this section of the circuitry on at super low current. Uh, anything else worth saying? Not really. Um, odd routing of the positive connection under pin 3. No, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Under pin 7, which they've not used of the chip, but they've just done what they sometimes do. Solder resist on that and screen print, and then the track passes under that pin and goes over to the positive connection there. Um, switch input, negative, positive. Output to enable the RF circuitry. Input from the RF circuitry. LED to drive the LED and out to send the data out that is to be transmitted to your receiving device. Let's take a look at the schematic. I shall zoom up just a tad more since it is fairly dense. So we have the microcontroller. When you push the button in the front, it's got a 100k pull-up resistor. It pulls that down to the zero-volt rail denoted by the little block here, which is matched down here. And that just goes low and it tells the microcontroller that the button's being pressed. There are decoupling capacitors. Both of them, well, all of them, one microfarad, um, roughly about just over 900 nanofarads. So good enough, one microfarad, because I measured them in circuit, one for the RF section, one for the microcontroller, and also one for the RF receiver. Now, when it wants to turn on the RF receiver, it turns this transistor on. It's a standard NPN transistor, a J6S9014. And when that one turns on, it pulls the gate of this MOSFET, uh, R1 equals CJ3401, to the zero volt rail, and that turns that MOSFET on, switching this very high value resistor up to the positive rail this very high value resistor, then acts the potential divider effectively with the transistor for the data to be read in. And uh, I'm not sure if the transistor is fully turning on, if it's being saturated, it might be, not sure. Um, it's very low level signals. But it's also used to feed a bias resistor to bias the gate slightly positive and also that's got the decoupling capacitor for stability. And there's a little squiggly loop antenna. I should have drawn it more squiggly. And a little diode. The diode is marked T... What is that? TY? TY. And the TY diode, I've got a note of that somewhere, is at 1SS314. TY diode equals 1SS314. And it's an RF diode. Um, so what I don't get here is that unless this circuitry has been carried over for something else, the microcontroller is running on the 3-volt rail. It will go most of the way to the 3-volt rail. Uh, couldn't they have just taken this output that's driving this transistor on, couldn't they have taken it directly over to just a, an output directly to there and then powered the RF receiver circuitry directly from the microcontroller? Is there a reason they didn't do that? Or is it? that this microcontroller is a universal design and it's uh, designed for higher voltage rails, maybe 12 volt or something like that, and it's got a regulator option, goodness knows. I don't know why they've done that. Uh, here is the LED driver for your little green LED. You could have colored that green. 1K resistor just lights up dimly when you push the button and do stuff. There's a 1K resistor between the microcontroller and the CYF4455B uh, RF Transmitter. Now this is, what do they call that again? There's a name for that. Amplitude shift keying, ASK. I shall put that down. Amplitude shift keying, in reality, they mean turning the carrier wave on and off. And this thing has a positive connection to the inductor, and it's presumably pulsing that to the zero volt rail, and then that's coupled through this capacitor, then through an inductor. There was the option for a capacitor that's not used, and then to the transmitting antenna. Um... Looks very simple, but probably quite complex inside. It has other microcontrollers. But that's it. Very strange. Um, particularly that double bit, the circuitry. I thought this was going to be some super complicated RF circuitry. It turns out, no. It's a single transistor being biased slightly on with the antenna there that just must jiggle it. Maybe that's an analog input or something like that, and it can detect very low modulation. I'm not really sure. Um, but the two transistors to turn that on is just overkill of the highest order. 
unless there's a reason for it. Were they worried about electrical noise and the microcontroller actually interfere with that and swamping the uh, modulation here and they wanted the nice clean lithium button cell type supply? Not really sure. But uh, there we have it. I'd guess that when it's in that mode of reading this, when you've uh, pushed the button and held it for that for for the multiple seconds, click four times and hold it for a while. When it goes into the reading mode, it's not transmitting at all, so the supply is going to be quite stable for this to pick up the signal. But it is quite strange. I'm, I won't show you the circuit board there. I'll show you the, the back of the picture, which is better. But it's quite strange that, you know, that wiggly line there can actually pick us up a strong enough signal to bias that single transistor on and actually signal back to the microcontroller. But there we have it. It works. I did find a seller of these microcontrollers selling them pre-programmed with this software, so for other people to build into their remotes. But um, it's an interesting little design, very neat, functional, and it does seem to clone most standard single-code uh, remotes. Very clever.